Yay! Hi, everybody, and welcome to my channel, Emma Desi. This is for you if you are a new writer who is trying to write their first book, revising their first book, and is looking for some tips, advice, strategy, craft knowledge, you name it, we've got it here in the channel. And one of the ways that um, we're going to be helping you is with the lovely Kat Caldwell, who has a special online retreat coming up. Hello, Kat. Hello, how are you doing? I'm very well. I'm so glad you're here today uh, to talk about it. Kat and I have known each other for a good few years now. And if you've been in either of our audiences for a while, you've probably seen us dipping in and out of each other's groups and communities. So it's great fun. So I was thrilled when Kat asked if I would come and be a part of this online retreat that she is hosting. So Kat, for those people who are new to both of our communities and don't know you, please would you just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you help writers? Yeah, um, I think we met each other because I run a podcast as well called Pencils and Lipstick. Um, started that in 2019, uh, basically to be able to learn from other writers, honestly. I had had a book come out in 2017, a historical fiction, and then I was about to publish my second one, Speculative Fiction, of course, I didn't, you can tell I didn't know enough to like stay in the genre that I was, should have stayed in. Um, so I also write contemporary fiction and short stories um, are probably my first love, but they're harder to get an audience for. Um, so I started the podcast as well to be able to learn. I think it's a great place to learn, talk to other people. Lots of people know more than me. Um, and then I became certified as a book coach through Author Accelerator just to learn even more. Mm. Um, and I think you and I have known each other through COVID, <laughs> held each other's virtual hands. Yes. <laughs> oh, it was a lifeline. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, writer, coach, um, podcaster. That's pretty much what I call myself. <laughs> yeah, well, that is exactly what you do. And now you're branching into online retreats and hopefully in the future in-person retreats. I'd love to come and do that. Um, but tell me a little bit about why you wanted to host a retreat. What, what was the inspiration behind this one? Ooh. So becoming a book coach, like I wanted to be certified because you go through a whole process, kind of like it's like a much smaller MFA, right? People go through their MFA. So really know the history of storytelling and how to pro most likely teach it. You know, like how do you help people craft a better story? And people come to me, like once you have a few books published and you're talking about it, people come to you for help. And I just felt like I needed to have the confidence of like being able to pull everything together and the organizational skills, you know, like I can write how I want to write, but like teaching and helping someone to like pull that in in their own way. So is different. So I got um, certified, which I th think is a great program, Author Accelerator. And then at the end of that, you're supposed to be a coach. <laughs> you're supposed to go out and find people that want to write. And I did a few different consulting things and it's certainly helped me like talk about um, writing on the, on the podcast. But I pretty quickly learned that I'm just not built for the fiction book coaching world. Like fiction is tough. A lot of people have a very odd schedule on fiction. They're, um, you know, it, it's just, it's hard to get a a writer who is committed to a certain amount of time to get their book done. And because I travel a lot, because my husband's family is in Spain, it just like, the more I thought of it, the more I thought the logistics don't fit in my life in order to give um, any client all that they should get from me. Mm -hmm. So then I had to sort of figure out, should I do like limited courses, you know? Um, my husband works a lot, so I'm always the one running the kids around after school. So that also seemed very difficult, but I thought I can do a certain amount of time in which I can get my mother to come <laughs> or I can get my husband, you know, like these are the days that you have to do it. Um, it, it like very concrete days. And so I, you know, figured out I can do that. So more than anything, it's just what fits my personality and my life. Mm -hmm. um, I still do think that writers, like any talented person out there, still needs to be um, 
fed and needs to learn, you know, and so I thought, well, workshops, you know, especially for anyone who either can't afford a coach or isn't quite there, Mm. you know, isn't ready to commit to that, they can still benefit from workshops with very knowledgeable people. Um, They can learn a lot more things. And I think it's also a way for people to get to know coaches who are working individually. So you can take a workshop, you can tell pretty quickly, are you going to jive with that person as, as your coach? Do you want more from them or not? So I think it's a great give and take, you know, like you get to know them, they get to teach their expertise and everybody's happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love retreats. I've been on several retreats and have um, taken part in some that are like the one that you're hosting where there is um, structured classes um, and workshops that we'll be doing and then others where it's actually just a time to get away and be with other writers, have some good food. Retreats often have good food um, and then and write and get a project finished. I think they're amazing. And what I love about the workshop ones particularly is that you do get to come in and you get focused for Mm -hmm. two days, three days, four days, whatever it is. You've put the rest of life aside, you come in and you get focused and you get so much done and you absorb so much and you get to implement the things that you're learning in the workshops as well. And I know that you have been very clever here and over the course of the two days, you set time aside where people can come in and implement the things that they're learning. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I have a very small sp- sprinting group that I run um, and a lot of writers I have found don't really understand what sprints are you know it's usually um, so the group that I have we set the timer on zoom and we focus on our writing um, and so I wanted to do that as well for the retreat online you know we can get anyone from anywhere around the world but how could I make it more like a retreat like you said like an in-person retreat And so there is a little coffee hour, but then there's also in between the workshops, the sprinting room is open. And so you can just set aside that time. Like I'm going to take what I just learned and I'm going to go through my notes or I'm going to outline a little bit more, or I'm going to take a scene and look at it because I think when you learn something and you're able to put it into practice right away, you have that time designated. Mm -hmm. It just helps you process it more, right? Like, at least for me, it's like, if I can take what Beth Barani or Emma Desi or Louisa George said teaches me and like take a piece of my work or or at least write out the notes that they've given the ideas for, like then I won't forget it and I'll be able to put it into my writing a lot easier. So, um, so yeah, the sprinting rooms will be open um, even through lunch on the East Coast because it's not necessarily lunch for everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so it's going to be 9 a.m. until uh, around 5.30 p.m. East Coast time. That's New York City time. Um, so I know that sort of shifts depending on what part of the world you're in. But yeah, there will be sprinting rooms open. We'll be there. You'll see my, I always have my camera on because the timer's there. You can have your camera on or off. But yeah, it's writing time. Yeah, cat sprints are great. I, I used to partake in them quite a bit until just time-wise, it, I couldn't quite match it up. But I I think the word sprint is often people misunderstand what that means and think that you've got to come in and write as fast as you possibly can. But it's not that, is it? It's just the it's just an easy word to use that represents just being focused for 25, 30, 35 minutes, whatever the timer is, where you get, get to focus for a short period of time and then you get to take a breather and that I think that's a good uh, an important differentiation to make for people so they don't feel you're coming in they're coming in and they've got to write as fast as they can and the other thing about your sprints cat is people are not expected to share I know that that's something that people get nervous about yes yes no there's no reading or sharing you come with your own work so it's not prompted Um, I know Beth Barani who's going to be teaching she also runs sprints in her group um, on the on the west coast and yeah it's it's really a time to just focus on your writing whatever it is um, mm-hmm. to not get caught up in how many words you're writing if you're a fast typer you know what you're writing that's awesome mm-hmm. um, but sometimes I use it to reread what I wrote it depending on how many days have gone by so that when I'm in the car or making dinner I can keep my thoughts going on the on the book knowing where where I want to go and sort of process that So just it's dedicated time to your book. That's what it is. Yeah, perfect. So you've mentioned Beth. 
I mentioned Lewis. So do tell us who is coming to talk um, and host the workshops over the course of the two days. Yeah, so Marcy Renee is my co-host, hostess, <laughs> whatever is PC these days. Um, so Marcy is a memoir writer. Um, and so we decided to put it together. She is going to do, be doing like interactive storytelling and, you know, the science behind telling your story, like why you should write that story that's in your heart. And then Emma Desi, of course, is coming in to do a workshop on May 16th, the first day. Um, Louis George said and Beth Barani and then a good friend, Tracy Gardner. She's a local Virginian here. Um, she writes romances with like these incredible hooks and so she's going to tell us how she gets her hooks um, and then Stacy uh, Juba is going to teach us how to add in some non-verbal emotion <laughs> that whole show don't tell um, and then I'm going to wrap up with five things that you uh, five mistakes you need to avoid basically um, to write a stellar story we're going to have giveaways sprinting times as we said um, so the lineup is is I think very exciting. I love all of you guys who are going. <laughs> I agree. I think it's a stellar lineup. <laughs> and so when is it taking place? So it's taking place May 16th and 17th, um, 9 a.m. Eastern to 5.30 ish p.m. Eastern. The end of the day will be the giveaways. I know that's late for some people in Europe, so you don't have to be present to do the giveaway. Um, so there's about, there's, three workshops one day and four workshops the next day, sort of, you know, trying to get those in, like spread out with the sprints. Um, there's everybody teaching the workshop has enough time to stick around for questions. So it's a good hour and a half. They'll probably teach for 40, 45 minutes, do some, you know, everyone's going to do differently. Um, I think everyone has a new workshop that ha they haven't really put out there yet. So it's going to be really fun. Um, if you come live, you'll be able to ask questions. So I'll be behind the scenes, you know, monitoring questions, be able to give it to everybody. We're going to stream it. You can participate on Zoom so you can be right there with everyone, not even webinar like you get to be there with the the teacher. Um, if you're more comfortable with Facebook, it's going to um, stream up there. So I'll just monitor the questions on both ends. Um, so yeah, it's going to be very interactive, just like a workshop, very small group. So I think, you know, it's an environment that you can get the most out of a teacher online. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it's great. I'm really, really excited about it. I'm honored to be part of it. So thank you very, very much for asking me. I love that you're in it. Yay. Um, so is there anything else that we need to know about the event? Um, I'm obviously, uh, what I will do is in the, sh the description below, I'm going to put the schedule so people can see that. Um, I'll put a link to where people can sign up. Um, uh, but is there anything else that you think I've not asked and I should have asked? I think I haven't mentioned, but they everything is recorded. So if you can't show up live, which I know like two days, especially if you're working full time, like I think you can get a lot live. Um, but if you want to go back and watch the recordings or you just can't make something or finish it, they will be recorded. They will be put almost into like a course, you know, in my Thrive Cart Learn, you will have access um, for life basically to be able to go back and watch that. And we will not be selling the workshop like afterwards. Everyone um, owns their own workshop. You know, Emma Desi can sell her workshop to you, but if you want the whole group, um, of all the workshops, the seven workshops, you have to get in um, before May 16th and be an attendee, get that ticket beforehand, and then you'll have it for life. Right. Yay! Okay, so guys, don't miss out. Um, I absolutely recommend you go and do it. Check out that link below and come and join us. It will be so much fun. It's going to be it's going to be informative, educational, and yes, definitely a lot of fun with some giggles along the way. So please do come and join us. Kat, thank you for hopping in to talk to me. I really appreciate your time today. Thanks. Thanks for having me.